Okay, cool. Those of you who are familiar with New Relic, great. Those of you who aren't, uh, basically it's a, it started off as um, Lou Cerny, which is, it turns out, an anagram of New Relic, um, started the company as a cloud-based um, uh, PCL at Versely. It's not my Cisco email address, but that's okay. SLY.com. Um, uh, started this as a, a, a SaaS offering uh, for uh, performance monitoring, and it's kind of grown into to more than that um, as well. But so what we use it for is we have a, a Java um, app that we're running that, <laughs> you know, um, that is, uh, this, so this is our dashboard. Um, uh, Java app that we're running that, that um, basically does, uh, it's, it's a collaboration application, so uh, you have an a Office document, sidebar and off, we, we jam a sidebar into Office that shows all the kind of revision history around the file and stuff like that. So kind of files and collaboration and people is, is, is the domain. So here you see a, um, a picture of what our app has been doing for the last 30 minutes. Something weird happened a little while ago. Probably it's Java, so it's probably GC or something, right? Um, the the, the, the bluish area is CPU. The greenish area is total request time. So this is measuring on the server side, not on the client side, but, so the, but once, the, once the request hits our server, this is measuring how, how long the request takes to process and kind of what's going on inside of it. Um, uh, we have a, uh, a, some JVMs running that then talk to uh, um, React on the back end. So uh, green is chatting with React, and blue is, is, is number crunching. And you can see we have, uh, so, so they have this app deck score, which is some sort of a composite of, of, uh, of uh, throughput and uh, uh, error checking and latency. Um, that they kind of you know, assign an application a given score. You want it to be higher. You can see here it blipped downwards right over here when, uh, when that spike, uh, probably GC or whatever, happened. Um, and then this actually isn't that interesting of a picture because uh, I work at Cisco. We're based in the U.S. So let's look at 24 hours. And um, you can see a lot more interesting data here. There's a big hump in the middle, right? Because this is, this is you know, when the work day starts, 8 a.m. Uh, in, in, uh, in San Francisco. And if we look back for the last seven days, you can see this actually happens every day, or at least five days a week. Um, so last, you know, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Monday, Tuesday. Um, and then if we look back, you know, three months ago, it takes a little longer to pull back more data. You can see, oh my God, that was horrible, <laughs> right? I, I don't even see anything like right here. And then, oh. so that was a problem. Um, uh, that that so uh, that, that we, we we did some work on that, and we're happier with where we are now. So, uh, ha what did we do to figure out what was going on with that? Well, we we can drill in, and I'll just go back to more recent history to talk about something useful. Um, we can drill in to um, grab uh, some, I'll pull up a transaction trace and a thread profiler. This is a different keyboard. So transaction traces let us kind of dig through and, and find interesting, um, understand what's happening in a given, in a given transaction that's, that's going on. I can see here. Um, we've got five different React servers in our cluster. You can see the breakdowns of conversations that are happening with each of them. We, we just round robin to all of them. So that means that all of our, our you know, most of our, 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 our transaction operation time was, was communicating with React. We're pulling back a lot of data in this case. And if I dig in here, you can see as you go through all these different requests that are happening you know, to React, the timings of them, et cetera, et cetera. Um, some interesting about, you know, some stuff about the class names where we're, where we're using them. And then if you're using a relational database, you also get SQL traces here as well, which is really cool. Um, the, the, the React integration isn't, isn't um, you know, kind of as tight as the SQL integration for kind of obvious reasons. Um, but so we get a lot of really interesting insight here. This lets you see what's going on that's slow. We also can then dive in and actually look at profile snapshots. So I'm going to pull up one that's kind of older. Um, and so what you can do is turn on profiling. So this is from the thread pro profiler here. You can go and start a profiling session from anywhere from two minutes to 10 minutes, which is really cool. This is a great feature whenever you have a bad option. 
Um, so pr turning on, normally when running with New Relic, there's really no overhead, um, at least in the JVM. I've only ever have experienced the JVM stuff. Um, but obviously, if you turn on the profiler on a given VM, you're going to start seeing some slowdown. Um, so this way, it's time boxed. So I can turn on a profiler, it's automatically going to shut off. I can't forget to turn it off, uh, which is super useful if you've ever been you know, dealing with production systems and profiling of them. Um, so this is a profile I took a while back. Um, you can see here the, the kind of the, the top-down time-based view of what's taking time and stuff like that, which actually isn't so interesting. Well, it can be interesting, but let me switch over to what I think is even more interesting, which is the CPU burn side of things, where I can see that get class loader is taking up a lot of time here. And um, so that's curious, right? So let's see why. I'm actually going to pull up this one. Eh. Is this one interesting? Yeah, this one's... Uh, I think that... Let's see if there's a better optimization, a more interesting one in here. Um, So if we put a different thread here, and um, there's, there's one in particular that was an interesting optimization. OK, this is a good one. Um, it's fill in stack trace. It's taking up 18% of our CPU burn. Why is that? Well, it's coming because of parse exception, which is coming out of dateutils.parse in Apache uh, HTTP client. Now, that's weird. Why would dateutils.parse date be, be doing that? Well, React's do, doing a get last modification date. And it turns out what's going on with this is the, 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 there's a bug in, in Apache HTTP client that uh, is costing us 18% of our CPU time. When you parse a, uh, a, a date, an HTTP header date, um, there's three possible formats for HTTP dates. And uh, there's one, which is the preferred one, and then there are two other ones. Uh, React uses the preferred one. HTTP client tries all three, starting with not the preferred one, starting with one of the other ones. So every time HTTP client goes out there to parse a, a header with a date, it's trying the wrong one. On top of that, uh, it, it, does, it uses a, 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 a date format.parse call, which uh, uh, throws an exception on failure. There are two ways to, to parse a date. One way throws an exception on failure for the lazy programmers among us. The other one, uh, uh, returns null if it, if it fails to parse. So this 18% cost is happening because, on the one hand, um, the, the, whoever you know, you know, kind of did the, 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 the HTTP client code did, used the wrong ordering for which date format to, to try first. And secondly, because uh, they, whoever wrote that code also just throws an exception and fills in the stack trace every time. So we, we patched this two ways. One is we, we fixed the HTTP client code. Um, it took uh, about, I don't know, half an hour. Um, and another one was we changed React in the interim because we, we weren't sure whether React would take our patch, whether Basho or the Apache uh, uh, HTTP client code base would take our, our, our patch first. So the other thing which is in, in React, we changed their invocation. There's also an invocation that lets you specify exactly which HTTP header ordering, you know, date format ordering you want to use. So we made both those changes. And, you know, in about, you know, an hour and a half worth of of digging through this data, pulling down sources, looking at what's going on in those two projects, and patching stuff, we saved 18% of our CPU time. So that's the sort of stuff that we, that we do. You know, thread profiling, we can do that. You, know, you, you do that down to the wire stuff where normally you do that in a lab or whatever. You can do this just by turning on a little profiling flag in a running system. That same system is, is what we use for our alerting, so letting us know if our thresholds are if, if our, this AppDex sc score goes below a certain threshold or if our throughput goes below a certain threshold, we get uh, notified. Uh, we also have operations teams within Cisco that do it, but you know, it's just easier to do this because we don't have to deal with some random opera operations center within Cisco. Uh, so this is a, basically all those sorts of things. Um, 
error handling and whatnot um, gets pulled back up to, uh, to our console here. And we can see all that kind of application dashboard stuff all in one spot, even at the level of server CPU load and uh, uh, memory utilization, disk utilizations, we get, we get alerts if one of our disks is, is running low in space because of you know, log files filling up or whatever. So really easy solution to deploy and um, from the whole dev, dev to production lifecycle, uh, very valuable. So I can't recommend it enough.